the Lion of Judah. Yes, sir. Who's mm. that? Please turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi. Come on. Wow. Wow. It's after Zechariah, or before Matthew, whichever is easier for you to find. Before Matthew, I think. Matthew. <laughs> Come on, Kobe. The title of my lesson today is. Oh, I gotta get my notes up. Uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. Faking myself out here. The title of my lesson today is An Acceptable Sacrifice. Ooh, amen. An acceptable sacrifice. What is an acceptable sacrifice today? Mm. I gotta tell you something. Anything that is valuable in life requires sacrifice. Why? Yeah. Mm. Why? We live in a finite world. Yeah. A world with a limit of time, yeah. a limited amount of money, yeah. and a limited amount of energy. Yeah. We all have 24 hours of the day. Yeah. And so how we invest that time mm. shows what is valuable to us. Yeah. Because every time you say yes, you are also saying no. no. If you say yes to football on Sunday, you're saying no to church. Right. And that's what you valuable. You'll sacrifice right. your relationship with God wow. so that you can go to the football pitch. Preach. But if you say no to football, I'm going to say yes to God, you might sacrifice your relationships. You might sacrifice wow. your fun. You might sacrifice your pleasures, but you will get a relationship Come with on. God. Come yeah. on, bro. Much what are you sacrificing for? Mm. What do you really value? I'll tell you, mm. whatever you spend your time and whatever you spend your money on, that is what you value. That is the God wow. that you worship. That's right. Wow. And so I have to ask, is that God the God of the Bible? Or are you worshiping a false God today? Wow. Come on, babe. Point number one, a blemished sacrifice. I'm going to talk to you about three unacceptable sacrifices. And they're all found in the book of Malachi. In Malachi chapter 1, God, he comes and he speaks to these people through the prophet Malachi. And he says in verse 6, A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you priests who show contempt for my name. Mm. Wow. So who is Malachi wow. speaking to? He's speaking to the religious people. Wow. wow. If you're religious here today, you think, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Oh yeah, I read my Bible once a week. Oh yes, I come to church when it suits me. This message is for you. Come on, bro. Come on. Preach that, bro. Because come on, the prophet went not to the cities of Tyre and Sidon and Sodom and Gomorrah. No, no, it went to the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. See, judgment begins in the family of believers. Yeah. And he says, to the priests who show contempt for my name. I hope you're not showing contempt for the Lord's name no, this sure. morning. No. Well, if you're offering him an unacceptable sacrifice, if you're offering him a blemish sacrifice, then you are. Yeah. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? What are you talking about, God? Mm. No, not me. Mm. By offering defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? No, no, Colby, you don't understand. I'm not like those other religious people. No, 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 no. I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good religious people. By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible, mm -hmm. is that your words? Not out of your mouth, but the words out of your heart. Wow. That you show contempt for the Lord's table. You show contempt for the Lord's church. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice. Is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Wow. Would he accept wow. you? Says the Lord Almighty. Wow. Mm. The craziest thing is, is that the people still offered a sacrifice, mm. but it wasn't an acceptable sacrifice. Wow. Like they had an animal that was blind. You can sacrifice that animal and you can eat the meat yourself and a blind sheep tastes just as good as a sheep that can see. Wow. But what you see is that they were giving what they had left over to God. Mm. 
They, they're, they're excess. They're extra. I don't need this sheep in my flock. So that's this flock. That's the sheep that I'm going to sacrifice to God. I hope that is not our mindset here today, church. That we, we prioritize our day. We prioritize our week. We fill all the stuff that we want to do. And then with our leftover time, we give that to God. Wow, bro. Wow. What is God's response? Like we, and you might think like, oh, but surely God should be grateful when I give him some of my time. No, wow. no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't show contempt for the Lord wow. by saying, oh, yeah, God is lucky to have me come and give a certain amount of time wow. to him. Wow. What is God's response to the people's blemished sacrifice? Verse 10. Oh, that one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would not light useless <laughs> fires on my altar. Ooh, ooh, I am not pleased with you. Oh, oh come on. God is not lucky to have you in his life. Oh. You are lucky to have God Please in your God. life. Yeah. 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 God's not lucky to have you give him the leftover scraps of your time, mm. of your money, mm. of your heart, of your energy. Just, yeah, after I finish all my studies, after I finish all of my jobs, all of my work, after I do all the stuff that I want to do in the week, mm. then I'm going to go give whatever's left over wow. to God. Ooh. God's like, no, no, no. Shut the door. No, no, yes. no. Don't let that person in my house of worship. No, no, no. I don't want them lighting useless fires on my altar. Come on. I don't accept that. I'm God. I don't accept anything but the best. Yes. Come on, God. What does he say? Um, I'm not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty, and I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations from where the sun rises to where it sets. When we offer God a blemish sacrifice, yeah. when we give Him anything but our best, it shows contempt for Him, and it degrades God. Wow, so true. I was like, okay, God's not worth the first of my time. He's worth the least of my time. Wow. Whatever's left over, because God's not really that important. Mm. God is not worth sacrificing for. And when other people see that, when they see Christians wow. that, you know, oh, I have yeah. a limited amount of time in the week allocated for God. Wow. And whatever I've left over for God, that's what I give to him. When other people see that, they're like, oh, I guess, I guess your God isn't that important. Mm. I guess he's not really that powerful. Mm. I guess he's not really worthy of my time if I don't see him, if I don't see you sacrificing your time for him. Come on, bro. And God says, no, I don't accept that. Mm. I do not accept a blemished sacrifice. Wow. The Bible says in verse 14, so we see that God, he doesn't accept a blemish sacrifice. He shuts the door. He doesn't want us lighting useless fires and faking ourselves out, thinking that we're more on fire for him than we really are. Wow. He says in verse 14, cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal wow. for the Lord. For I am a great King, wow. says the Lord Almighty. Yes. And my name is to be feared among Come the nations. Come on. Amen. When you give God anything but your best, God calls you a cheat. Woo. And he says, wow. you should be cursed. Wow. You think your university degree is more important than me? Wow. You think your job is more important than me? Cursed are you. Wow. Don't you know that I am God? Wow. Don't you know that I'm the great King, wow. and my name is to be revered among the nations mm. from the sun rising in the east to where it sets in the west. Wow. Come on, King. Preach, preach, Cursed are you. Wow. And you know what? There are many people that understand this who are not Christians. Wow. Because they give their God their best. Wow. And they curse anyone who sacrifices oh, wow. a blemish offering to their God. Wow. I think a great example, Chris was showing about football. Yeah. Man, you see the devotion to the God of football in this nation. You see people sacrificing their best, moving over, uh, moving heaven and earth to be able to support their team. I think this is in many things is that uh, men, we love sports, do we not? Yes, we yeah, do. we do. In America, one of the uh, the biggest sports in America is basketball. Woo! Any basketball fans in the house? Let's go! <laughs> and uh, if you don't, uh, if you're not a fan of basketball, I would encourage you watch the Netflix documentary, The Last Dance, yeah. because it will get you yeah. into basketball. You will become a fan of basketball. Come on! 
when you see one of the most inspirational stories in, I think, all of sports. Mm -hmm. So the last dance, it, sh it charts Michael Jordan's journey with the Chicago Bulls from eventually, from beginning at the worst team in the league wow. to eventually taking them to three back-to-back -back championships. Wow. He retired, came out of retirement, and went on to win another three P. Sure. So, in the practice, you, you, in one of the episodes, you see that Michael Jordan is pushing the team. Mm -hmm. He's pushing the team. He's pushing the team. And other people talk about how the players on the team, they really hated him because he was so <laughs> severe. He was so intense. He demanded such levels of commitment and excellence from the players because basketball was his God. And he says that I'm going to give absolutely everything to my God. I'm going to devote my entire life, that my entire purpose in life is to play basketball. And anyone who's going to play on my team has to have the same level of commitment as me. Mm. In one of the practices in 1995, he was practicing and he was, he was pushing one of the other players, Steve Kerr. Mm. And he was pushing him and he was pushing him and he was pushing him and he shoved him and Steve Kerr shoved him back and he punched him in oh the face. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Not once, multiple times. All right. He punched him several times and the two players had to pull them off. And he stormed out of the gym in a, in a fit of rage, and Steve Kerr was separated. And the, the coach, Phil Jackson, came to him. Now, Michael Jordan is the captain of the team. Yeah. He's the NBA all-star, superstar player. And he's like, you know, Michael, as the captain of the team, you know you just beat up the smallest player on the wow. team. Does that make you feel like a big man? Like mm. you, you beat up Steve Kerr, the, the little guy on the team? You feel strong? Wow. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, yeah, I gotta go. He goes and he apologizes to Steve. He's like, man, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I should have done that. Steve's like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine, I got a black guy, but I'm cool, I'm cool. I, no, no, you want my best, and don't worry, I'm gonna give my best. Wow. You, you're pushing me, don't, don't worry. I'm gonna give my absolute wow. best. Come on. Come and he didn't get bitter, wow. but he saw Wow. Michael's commitment wow. to the team that he wanted to push every player to the absolute limit and beyond. And he's like, yeah, I'm with you. Don't worry. You punch wow. me in the face anytime. I'll hit you back. It's cool. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Come and on. what happened two years later in the NBA Finals, when Michael Jordan was double teamed, mm. he passed the ball to Steve Kerr 100% certain that he would score yeah. the winning bucket. Clutch. And he did wow. to win the championship. Come wow. on, Steve. Why? Because he was all in. Right. Yeah. I gotta ask you, are you all in today? Yes, I'm all in today. Do you do you come to church with a blemished sacrifice? No. Wow. Where you're like, you know what? This this whole church thing, this whole God thing, it's important, but I have other priorities. No. Well, let me tell you what. I used to be an English teacher before I was a preacher. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as priorities. Okay. Plural. In the English language, the word is priority. Oh, singular. Okay. You only have one priority. That's the most important thing in your life. And you know, I challenge you to make God your priority. The one most important thing in your life. What's the next type of sacrifice we can give to God that's unacceptable? An emotional wow. sacrifice. All right. Wow. Malachi chapter 2 in verse 13. Come on. So God, he's just, he just letting them have it. I'm just letting you guys have it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have it. Yeah, have it, verse 13. Another thing you do. You flood the Lord's altar with wow. tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks at you with favor and offering and accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask, why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You've been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. What had happened to people is that they were being unfaithful to God and they are being faithful to their spouses. Wow. They were intermarrying with the nations instead of being a holy people that were set apart. They're like, no, no, we're going to be like the world. We're going to not really value marriage. That's the world that we live in. Yeah. Marriage is not held in high esteem. Wow. The, the idea of monogamy, yeah. the idea of a lifelong fidelity, these yeah. things are not cherished in our society today. Preach. And God gets upset by that. He's like, no, that's not okay. Yeah. You can't do that. Come on, bro. And the people, they're like, I just don't understand why this is happening. <laughs> I'm such a victim. Life wow. is so not fair. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Flooding the Lord's
towards altar wow. with tears. Wow. We can do this, can we not? Yeah. yeah. We get all emotional. We get all sad. We get all depressed, mm. wondering why the world is against us. Mm. When in all fact, we're actually against God. Yeah. And we're reaping what we sow. Uh, uh, uh. You, 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 you sow sin, and you wonder why you reap destruction. Wow. <laughs> wow. Preach, bro. Is that, I think we live in the most privileged generation ever. Yeah. Yeah. There's never been greater wealth, greater prosperity, greater safety, greater opportunity. Wow. And what does it create? It's created a, a generation of entitled, spoiled brats. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Preach that, bro. Where rather than being grateful for all the goodness that God has given us, rather than being grateful for all the, uh, the, the privileges and opportunities that our parents gave to us, wow. that, uh, the things that we have available to us, we're focused on what we don't have. Yeah. Oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. Oh, I only have the iPhone 11. I don't have the iPhone 14. Oh, no, man. Life is so unfair. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. And we can get depressed and emotional mm. wondering why our life is not the way that we want it to be. Mm. I... I can sometimes do this, so I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching Come to you guys. Man. 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 Don't, uh, don't feel bad if this is you, it's me. Uh, when I was in high school, so I uh, was very privileged to be able to grow up in Indonesia. Mm. And in Indonesia, I got to go to a private school. And it was a very good private school. <laughs> and the classes were very small. So most of the classes were like 8, 10, 12 people to a class. And I had one of the bigger classes. So my class was like... 22, which were like really, really big wow. for this small private school. <laughs> and what would happen is, is that beginning our first year, freshman year, so you have four years of high school in America, and the first year, what we would have is every Friday night, we would have games. We'd have volleyball games, football games, basketball games, and each, every week of the month, uh, one of the years of the school would put on a meal and we would sell meals to the community to raise money for our final senior trip. Mm -hmm. And it was quite a small sort of like area and there was like not a lot of space. And it was kind of perfect for a 10, 12 man team. Mm -hmm. But we had a 22 man team. Mm -hmm. And so what would happen is, is that uh, people would go, they would work, and I would go, I'd go up to the, to the cash box and I'm like, oh, do you need help mm -hmm. here? No, I don't need help here. Okay, go to the bread slicers. Oh, do you need any help here? No. Go to the pickles. You need it? No, you don't. Oh, you, ice? Okay, I'll get you some ice. Here you go. Got your ice. Do you need any help? No. Okay. Wash your dishes. Wash, wash, wash. Okay, dishes are all done. Need any help? Okay, good. And I would just work my way down the line and skive off to go play video games. <laughs> and I did this regularly. <laughs> and as it turned out, the people in my class had some feelings towards me. <laughs> because we all work together collectively for a collective fund that all of us get to benefit from. Mm. And I wasn't sacrificing my time on a Friday night. I wanted to go off and I wanted to just warm up before my game and I wanted to just do my thing. I wanted to be able to play a quick game of basketball on the side while I was waiting for whatever. And I didn't want to sacrifice. I didn't want to invest. And so people started resenting me for not being a part of the team mm -hmm. and not investing and not sacrificing when everyone else was sacrificing. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't get it. I was like, man, I don't understand why people like, like such and such a person is so mean to me. Like they don't like me. I don't understand. And I started getting into this victim mentality. Oh, life's not fair. They just this and they that. But the truth was is that I was unrighteous. Mm -hmm. The truth was is that I didn't sacrifice I didn't invest in the team, so the team didn't see me as part of the team. Mm. And rather than actually taking responsibility for what I was doing and repenting, mm. I just became a victim. Oh. I started pointing the finger, I started blaming other people, I started criticizing other people. I hope that's not any of us here today, mm. where we behave in an unrighteous way, where you stay up all night, don't do your assignments, and then you wonder why you're stressed the next day. Oh my goodness, I'm so depressed. Life is so hard. Oh no, no. You are unrighteous. Mm. Where you don't actually properly manage your finances, you just spend money willy-nilly wherever you go, and then you wonder why your bank account's empty at the end of the month. No, no, you're unrighteous. Mm. You're not disciplined. 
you're not focused, you're not investing in God's kingdom, mm -hmm. and so you're just doing whatever you want, mm -hmm. and we can't do this. We can't then come to God talking about how hard our life is, come and on, how bro. it's so bad, that, and bro. life's not fair. Yep. No, God is not interested in your emotions. Mm. He wants your devotion. Wow. Wow. Yes, sir. We can't be emotional with God. We need to be devoted to God. Yes. Yeah. I want to challenge you. If you have been a victim, if you've waved up the flag of life's not fair and it's so hard and I'm so overwhelmed by such little amounts of work and pressure, I got good news for you. That used to be me. I used to play the victim card. I used to blame other people for my problems. But then I became a disciple, yes, and then sir. I repented, yeah. and then I started taking ownership and responsibility. Yes. I started getting help, because like I didn't know how to manage a schedule. Maybe you don't know how to manage a schedule. That's okay. There are people in the church that do. Mm. Find them, get their help, they will help you manage a schedule. And instead of being all emotional and overwhelmed and going to God and flooding the altar with tears, no, you can just be responsible, you can be humble, you can get people to help you, so that way you can be fully devoted to God. Amen. 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 I want to challenge you. Don't be a victim. Mm. Whatever is going on in your life, Whatever problem you have, be it financial, be it a new job, be it a new living accommodation, be it a type of assignment at university, whatever problems you have, take responsibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't blame other people for your problems. Your problems are your problems. Preach. Be humble. Get other people to help you. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, whatever problem you're experiencing right now, someone else has already experienced yeah. it and they've overcome it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on the other side, they can help you get through it, but we can't be victims, we have to be disciples. Come Amen? On. Awesome. Wow, come on. Point number three. What is the final unacceptable sacrifice in God's kingdom? A stolen sacrifice. Oh. Oh. Chapter 3, verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. Let's just stop right there, guys. I got good news for you. I change all the time. Rebecca will tell you. You change. I mean, you wake up and you're one way. You come to church, you're one way. You go to a church, you leave church, you're another way. Sunday, you're fired up. Monday, you're depressed. We're changing all the time. So that's just reality. Like, don't feel bad if that's you. That's me. <laughs> but I got good news for you. God doesn't change. Yes. God isn't fired up when it's sunny and sad when it's rainy. No, God created the sun and the rain. So God's the same. God's word is the same. God's promises are the same. That means that when we trust in God, not our emotions that are up and down all the time, God is consistent. God is stable. And that means that we can have stability in our life when we build our life on the foundation of Jesus Christ the rock, not ourselves. So I just want to just encourage you guys with that, the truth that, that God's the same. He doesn't change. We can trust in Him. Yes. It says, I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you've turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Like, if you guys have ever read the Bible, like more than just the Gospels, if you've ever read any part of the Old Testament, you'll see a recurring theme. God loves His people. God saves his people, God's people accept God, and then they very quickly reject him. Yeah. And there's this cycle that continues throughout the Old Testament, mm. throughout Genesis, mm -hmm. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, all the way through! Mm. <laughs> Where God's there, He's steady, he's steadfast, he's faithful, and we are unfaithful. Yeah. And as we get to the final book in the Old Testament, he's like, guys, 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 I'm the same. I don't change. I'm not the problem. Wow. You're the problem. Wow. Yeah. What does he say? Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Wow. Woo. I don't know if any of you guys feel like maybe God has abandoned you. Mm. You're, you're back in having those uh, emotional sacrifices where life is so hard. And if only God would just help me. If only God would just answer my prayers. If only God was here for me. Mm. Why well, got good news for you? God is here for you. Yes, yes. 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 The problem is you're not here for God. That's it, bro. That's what the challenge is. That's it. 
And God, he says, hey, if you return to me, I will return to you. Mm. I know this, this sermon's been a little spicy, been a little fiery, but I, I want to end on a high note. I want to end with hope yeah. that if you just repent, God will accept you. Yes. Yeah. If you just return to God, he will accept you. He'll embrace you back. Amen. But unfortunately, that's not what they do. It says, but you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how are we robbing you? What? Not me, God. No. I would never do that to you. In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Wow. Wow. A stolen sacrifice. Every time I've heard this scripture preached, it's used exclusively with money. But as uh, our brother uh, Chris shared, is that money is attached to the heart. Mm -hmm. So when we withhold our money from God, we're actually withholding our heart from God. Um, the Bible says in Haggai that God tells his people, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Like, I have all the money in the world. I don't need your money. The reason why I demand your money is because I demand your heart. Right. And your heart is connected to your money. So when you withhold your money, you withhold your heart. What is this really talking about? God wants our hearts. Yeah. He wants all of our hearts. He wants 100% of our hearts. That's what he's always wanted. Yeah. From the very beginning, the Garden of Eden, God created a perfect utopia for yeah. us wow. to be with him forever. And then we messed it up. Yeah. And then the rest of the Bible has been God pursuing us wow. to get us back because he loves us that much. Wow. That's how much God wants your hearts. Amen. That's it. God is relentlessly pursuing you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He won't stop. He wants you that bad. That's how much he loves you. Mm -hmm. And when we don't give our hearts to God, when we resist, particularly when we get religious, mm -hmm. when we pretend like we give God our heart, mm -hmm. wow. we're like, we, we promise to give God our hearts, and then we don't, wow. that's when he says, cursed are you. Wow. 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 Come on, babe. I think it's really important for us to be men and women of integrity. Yes. Growing up, my mother, she taught me something. She said, Colby, your word is your bond. Mm. If you say something, you do it. Come on. And growing up, I had absolute confidence in my mother. If she said she was going to do something, she would do it. Mm. If my mother promised me something, she said, hey, if you do this, this will happen. I'm going to do this for you. If she said it, it was like gospel. It was golden, like you knew for sure it was going to happen. And there would need to be like a natural disaster to stop it from happening. <laughs> and so that's how I was raised. But unfortunately, that's not how most of the world operates. Mm. See, most people are not people of integrity. Mm. Like, how often have you asked someone, hey, come on, I'll see you at church tomorrow. Awesome, yeah. I'll be there. Oh, man, bro. And then they're not there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How often do people say, yes, I'm going to seek God with all of my heart. Mm. Yes, I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to do that. And then they don't. Mm. And now what's happening is because people feel so entitled, they feel like, well, I don't know you an explanation. I don't know you nothing. Like, no, no. You said you were going to do something and then you didn't. Yeah, that yeah. requires an explanation. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Like you say, I'm going to do this. I expect you to do this. You don't do this. I want to know why. What happened? Did you get hit by a car? Did a dog bite you? Like, what stopped you from keeping your word? What stopped you? You said you were going to do something. We were having a conversation with this guy yesterday. Big bodybuilder, top accountant, uh, PWC. And I challenged him. I was like, hey, you need to come to church tomorrow. And he's like, okay, I'll try. I was like, excuse me? You'll try? Did you try to get a job at PwC? I don't think so. You did it. Don't say, I'll try. He said, okay, okay. I, I'll think about it. No, don't say you'll think about it. Because that means you won't do it. I said, oh, well, I, I can't say yes for sure. I was like, okay, that means it's no for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I, I, as much as he was, I wish he would have just told me no from the get-go, I am very glad he never told me yes. Because he, he just knew, he's like, no, I'm not coming to church, but I really don't want to say it to this guy's face. I can't say yes, but I don't want to say no, so I'm just going to keep backpedaling. 
And he never said yes. So I was like, okay, that's a no. <laughs> but at least I can appreciate the fact that he never said yes. Yeah, bro. Come on. This guy had integrity. That's awesome. There have been several other people that I met this week that I said, hey, you should come to my church. They're like, yes, send me the details. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so funny when you talk to people and they say, okay, great. Yes, yeah, Sunday, I'll be there. It's like, hold on. I haven't given you my number. Yeah, oh my goodness, yeah. And I haven't told you the address. <laughs> that there was one time I did that. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. No, I haven't given you my number. They're like, yeah, but you told me the address. Like, yeah, it's Hilton Hotel. Yeah, I'll be there. I and I was like, oh, touche. Yeah, you got me. Wow. But so many people, they think, like, you don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They think that you're just like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. Shh. <laughs> and then they, they never show up. <laughs> But it's really easy for us to point the finger and to criticize other people who aren't men and women of integrity, yeah. who say they're going to do something and don't do it. Yeah. But what about us? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do we make broken promises? Mm. And they can be little things, okay? Can I be real? I, yeah. I, I'm a yeah. sinner in the church too. Yeah. You, yeah. you want to hear one of my worst problems for broken promises yeah. and I'm going to repent and I'm going to do much better at it. Oh, no. mm. Timekeeping. We live in such a low character, such a low integrity world that we just expect people to show up late. Like the measure you use will be used for you. You're like, okay, you're five minutes late, I'm five minutes late, we're all late, it's okay. But I think I would really like to grow in my integrity and I would really like to become a person when I say I'm going to do something, like I'm going to meet you at this place at this time, I actually do it. Mm. And I, that's, hey, that's something that I got to work on. I got to work on becoming a better man of integrity where I say I am going to meet you at this time, I'm going to do it. So that's, that's a weakness that I have. But you know something that I am really good at? Mm. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Mm. I might do it a little bit late. <laughs> But I'll do it. Amen. Come on, bro. Is that you? When you say you're going to do something, do you do it? You might mess up. You might be late. You might need a bit of help to do it. But if you say you're going to do something, do you actually do it? If you make a commitment to someone, do you actually follow through with that commitment? If you make a commitment to God, like, okay, God, I'm going to seek you with all of my heart. Do you actually do it? I'm not saying that we need to be perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But what we need to do in our love for God is we need to offer Him acceptable sacrifices. Yeah. Where when we make a vow to the Lord, we need to keep it. Mm -hmm. Even when it hurts, as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. What does God say? Verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into my storehouse. Bring the whole sacrifice. Bring your whole heart mm -hmm. into my church. Come on. That there will be food in my house. Test me in this, mm. says the Lord Almighty, mm. and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Remember how I said God has all the money in the world? Mm -hmm. He also has all the people in the world. Mm -hmm. He also has all the jobs in the world. He has all the degrees in the world. He has all the houses in the world. It's everything. Whatever problem you have, God can fix. Amen. No matter what struggle you have, no, no matter what illness you have, no matter what debt you have, no matter what character fault you have, no matter what threats you have against your life, no matter what problem, yes. God can fix it. Amen. And God promises that He will fix it if you just give Him all of your hearts. Amen. I want to challenge this church. We need to come to God with an acceptable sacrifice. Yeah. What is an acceptable sacrifice? The only acceptable sacrifice, a whole heart. Yeah. I want to challenge you. Some of you have been coming to God with an unacceptable sacrifice, a blemish sacrifice, where it's, mm. it's good, but it's not your best. Mm. It's time to repent. And I'm talking to people, whether you're a member of this church or whether you're not a member of this church. Amen. Amen. Some of you have been coming with emotional sacrifices mm. where you play the blame game. You point the finger at other people, blaming them for your sin. It's time to be done with that. Yeah. We don't have any more time for victims. Oh, We've got to be victors in Jesus. Amen. We can overcome the problems of our past through God. And then lastly, 
We need to give God an acceptable sacrifice. We can't make these broken promises to God where we say we're going to do stuff and we don't actually do it. You might struggle to do it. You might need a bit of help to do it, but that's okay. Just be humble. God gives grace to the humble. God will help us. God will bring other people into your life to help you. It'll be amazing. I want to challenge you. Give God all of your hearts. Give God the only acceptable sacrifice. And to God be all the glory.